Today you'll see a really cool wrap skirt. It's nice and long. There's a lot of optional features that you can add onto this wrap skirt to make it as detailed as you want it to be. Mine's super classic. I made the simple version. It's navy, it's linen. What's not more classic about this? Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today I have a skirt for you. It's a wrap skirt and it's made out of woven fabrics. It's called Bohemian Wrap Skirt. If you focus on the first word, Bohemian, you know, it might bring you some ideas of how this skirt is going to be. And it certainly can be Bohemian if you choose some of the details here. But if you leave some details out, it could just be a simple wrap skirt, really classic. So it's a long skirt, longer at the back. On the front, the two wrap pieces are rounded. So in the front, when it crosses over, it gives you that beautiful tulip effect that I really, really like. I'm a big fan of this. I've actually hacked patterns in the past to look like this because I hadn't found a pattern that was like that. But this time the pattern is like that. So that's cool, no hacking required. And then you can sew a simple hem, which would make it really classic, really simple. That is the option I've chosen to do. Or all around that curved section and the bottom hem everywhere, you can add a ruffle, which is a long piece that you gather into or that area or you can sew on a flounce which wouldn't be gathered in but it's cut like a circle so it'll give you all that flounce effect all the way around so I think if you add those two effects the ruffle or the flounce your skirt can end up looking more bohemian if you just sew it normal and simple just hem it all the way around it just looks like a really classic wrap skirt that fits really well there are ties and you can choose to do a tie that's a little wider an inch wide inside that waistband you'll be interfacing it partially and it's a super long waistband slash tie because it serves as a tie as well you'd be doing a buttonhole on one of the sides to cross it over or you can sew a binding or make a really narrow waistband that ends up about half an inch that is the option I've chosen I'll show you in the sewing segment how I made mine super easy it was no no stress with this narrow one you don't need to interface anything in there so that's nice. It's a full, full wrap skirt, so it opens up completely. There's nothing fake about this wrap skirt. <laughs> Basically, you put it on extended behind you. You wrap the left side of you over first, and then on your right hand, that side, you wrap it on, and then you tie it on on the left side. One optional feature that you can add that I never do are inseam pockets. And if I was forced under duress to sew the pockets here, I wouldn't be too upset because these are pockets I approve of. These are pockets that are sewn on the side, but are also anchored up here on the waist seam. So they're not the type of pockets that are sewn lower, that just dangle on your upper thigh, not anchored to anything. Those pockets I would never sew, I just would not. These I would sew under the rest, but I wouldn't be that unhappy. I just don't sew in seam pockets, but I know a lot of you love them. I've seen the technique in the instructions. It's very clear, very easy to do. And it's a type of pocket that's fixed and it's not gonna be dangling around, bothering you as you live your life. So if you wanna sew the pockets, I fully approve of the technique. For a while now, Kate, who owns Pattern Emporium, has been running Friday sales at 50% off. Not every single Friday, sometimes when there's a new pattern release, the sale doesn't run, but it's running. <laughs> So this pattern that you're going to see today, the Bohemian Wrap Skirt, is 50% off and the sale runs for 18 hours. If you go to the website, you'll see the countdown on the top so it's easy to see how many hours are left. Remember, we're dealing with a huge time difference, depends on where you live. In Australia, they're, you know, in the future. <laughs> so the sale starts Friday 6am in Australia, but over here it's Thursday afternoon. And it ends noon Saturday, but over here in this area of the world, it's gonna end Friday night. So it's easy to check the countdown so you're not confused. I'll leave you my affiliate link right at the top of the comment section pinned. If you click on my link, it'll take you directly to the website. If you end up purchasing, I do receive a small commission back from the designer. And that is one way I make an income creating helpful sewing videos here on YouTube. So if you want to support my work without actually paying any extra, that is one way. And if you do, I'm super grateful. Fabric, woven fabric, light to medium weight fabric are going to work the best. I'll say from the get-go that there are fabrics that are just not going to look too nice like denim. I think even if you had a lighter weight denim, it would just be too structured and it would just poke out away from your body. The ruffles would end up super bulky. The flounce is not going to flounce, it's just going to poke like this. You know, cotton sateen I think is also a little too heavy. Cotton twill, that type of material. Quilting cotton I think would be too stiff for this. 
So stay away from those. I'm just saying I wouldn't choose those. You can choose more structured fabrics like cotton lawn, lighter cottons, chambray, 100% linen is always amazing, linen rayon blend, linen cotton blend. In actual fact, my fabric choice this time is a linen rayon blend, which is one of my favorite fabrics. I collect this type of material. I love using it for everything and it just looks amazing. Linen looks beautiful just to look at. And if you're working with a solid, it just really shows off the features and it's something that lasts well. It feels amazing on the skin. It's got that structure mixed with that little bit of drape from the rayon. So I think it's an amazing choice for this design. Then you have drapier fabrics. I would not want to use 100% rayon, the light weave, the plain weave that's super light, often sheer. I would stay away from that. And if you wanted something drapey, I'd choose rayon twill, a tensile, that type of material would be really, really nice and it wouldn't end up being too sheer. There's some rayon crepes as well that are a little heftier and not transparent. Be aware, if you are sewing the flounce or the ruffles, you might end up seeing the wrong side of the ruffles and the flounce as you move around and walk. So if the wrong side of the fabric is very contrasting and not pretty to look at, I would be cautious. If you're sewing the waistband that's a little wider, you will need a little bit of fusible interfacing. Otherwise, you don't need any extra notions here, just your fabric, your thread, that sort of thing. Because this is an older pattern, the sizing goes from 6 to 22 Australian. The largest hip circumference here for size 22 is 50 and 3 quarters, just so you're aware. Newer patterns have a size range from 4 to 30 Australian. I've chosen a size 16 Australian. You know the fit at the waist is going to be as fitted as you need it to be because it's a full wrap skirt, it's fully open with the ties. So you can tie it up fitted for how you need it to be on that day. So if your waist fluctuates an inch or two every day, you'll be sweet with this one. You won't need to worry. And then it's just going to skim over your hips. It's got a nice A-line shape. On the pattern pieces, you're going to find three cut lengths, short, regular, and tall. The regular has a length of about 35 inches and it keeps increasing two more inches for the regular, 37, and for the tall, 39, it's about 101 centimeters. That's usually how I like my long skirts to go. So I just use the tall length here, the lowest cut line, and that was all zero fitting adjustments. I'm really not utilizing my brain for fitting here. I just choose my size and I know it's gonna be amazing. So that's really nice, really relaxing. For sewing, I've sewn all the main steps for you. You'll see it's very easy to put together. The ties, I certainly did scratch my head a little bit until I saw a diagram on the instructions that totally cleared it up for me. When you wear this, you're gonna tuck the left side of your body in first, the left side. That's the side that's going to have the long tie because it has to go all the way around your waist and meet up here on the left. And then the right side of the skirt has a side with a short tie because it's just going to come forward and you're going to tie it up there. All that thing about how you look at something down, it's on your right hand, but it's actually going to end up on the left side of your body. So I do explain that in the tutorial. <laughs> so let's see how to whip this up. This is my back piece for the Bohemian wrap skirt. It comes from one whole length and my fabric was wide enough for me to be able to put it on the fold. On the pattern piece, you have the option of a center back seam as well. So it just depends on what you like. I folded that seam allowance away. That is an option as well. And so I have a really clean back piece just on the fold right there. This is the tall length that I'm doing. There are several cut lines there for petite, regular and tall. I'm just doing the longest version available and I'm cutting the simple wrap without the ruffle, without the flounce. These are the two front pieces for the Bohemian wrap skirt. Now these are specifically very wide. You can see if this curve wasn't there, this is how straight that would be and it takes up all that width over there. I could not cut these together using one length of fabric, you know, all in one go. I had to cut them separately, which means I got long pieces of leftover fabric from the sides. I'll be sure to use that with princess seams or something later on. So yeah, it could be a little bit fabric hungry. And the front, you'll see a grain line mark like that. Really important to keep that grain line mark on the grain line, measure to the edge of the selvage or something. And then in the center, you have to make a little mark. I have a little yellow mark there. That is the center front, right? Before getting anything done and any seams, which are really just the side seams, I'm gonna be stay stitching the waist areas for both the front and the back pieces. I think that's super important because we don't want this to stretch out. We have a waistband that could be a little wider or a little narrower there. There's certain marks that need to match up the side seams and all of that. So I think the stay stitching is going to be super important. 
After stay stitching, I'm going to do the surging of everything minus the waist areas. <laughs> I'm doing the plain wrap, which means I'm not going to have a ruffle or a flounce along the front or the bottom. And so I'm going to be surging all of the edges so I can be done with surging. And then I don't have to go back to that machine for the rest of the sewing construction. I'm going to be doing the narrow waistband just because it's going to use less fabric in general and I want to keep the maximum amount that I have left over for other garments. So because I had so much yardage of this fabric, I had all the length along the selvage, I cut my tie all along the selvage, which means I cut it on the cross grain. I don't really see anything wrong with doing that. I have no internal turmoil about doing that. It means that I don't have to have seams to achieve the length that I want which I would have had to have at least one or two seams if I'd cut it, you know, on the, on the right grain line. <laughs> so for, you'll find that chart in the pattern that tells you the length to cut for the size that you're sewing. This is a size 16 and I had to cut 338 centimeters. Now I'm going to be using this bias tape maker. You can always use these bias tape makers, even though this is cut on the straight of grain, it's not cut on the bias. This goes along a waistline. It doesn't need to mold to a significant amount of curve. So this does not have to be cut on the bias. It's a waistband. So I'm gonna be using that. This is the widest, biggest bias tape maker I have. It says 25, it'll end up an inch wide. When you fold it, it's gonna end up half an inch wide. To be able to use this, you always just take double what it says there. So 25 times two is 50, 50 millimeters, five centimeters, two inches right there. So that's what I've done, all that length by two inches here, and this is gonna work. Here is the back skirt all extended, all edges surged. This is right sides up here and I've also surged the edges of the front pieces. We're going to put these right sides together, aligning them at the side seams. You can see that there's a curve right here. I think it's really pretty because you're going to see a little bit more of your leg on the front with the wrap. At this point it doesn't matter which one goes on top because we're just going to sew the side seams now, align them, sew them. I've taken my time to hand base the hem. I wouldn't do this with just pins or just pressing it because it's really curved. So I'm gonna use a small hem allowance, about three eighths of an inch, and I'm gonna sew this down. It's all the way. There's a point you get to the side seam. This is all the front, it's all curved, and then you have all the back. So it's a pretty long hem. I'm really confident it's gonna turn out neat because of the hand basting. The process where you mark all these reference points on the ties is the same. The only difference is that the narrow tie doesn't have an interface section like the wider one does. This is just fabric because it's really narrow. I took all of this length of more than three meters and folded it in half. And these lines that you see here were the first lines that I marked and that's the half point of this tie. So that's important. To start making the marks on this tie, this template has to be on the top and the tie has to be on the bottom, wrong sides up. So you can see all the folds here. That's how you need to place it. That is on the pattern labeled as A. That is the one that has to match the center of your tie. It's not the center back of the skirt, it's just the center of this length. Now, why is it at the center back of the skirt? It's because the tie is gonna be longer on one side and shorter on the other side. So that's why this whole template exists. I've marked with red my size, which is size 16. So further this way, I marked a line here, which is the center front. Then I marked this other line here. And then further that way, I marked this one that is the center back. Now I'm gonna scoot this all over so I can keep marking. 
this last line that I had here that is the center back of a skirt corresponds to this D. What I have to do now is flip this like this. Now my reference pattern piece is upside down, but I can still see the marks. This is the way that I found it the easiest. So I'm gonna keep marking here this next one, which corresponds to A, and this is a side seam, and I'm actually gonna write a little S in there. No one's gonna see it, but it's gonna be easy for me to know. The, the next line I see is right there, and this is the other center front. I'm just put an F right next to it there. So there I have all the marks done. Now when I fold this at the center back, which is this, this is actually the middle part of the tie. If you keep going, you're gonna see that one tie, one side is shorter than the other and that's how it's supposed to be. Okay, here I'm at the sewing table. I've sat down because all the steps I'm gonna be comfortable. <laughs> I'm gonna need to be comfortable. So I'll take this pin out. What we have here is the center back of the skirt and the center back that I marked on my tie right here. So that is gonna go there. I'm just gonna wrap it all the way around. I have good experiences with just doing this step in one go. So the instructions say that you get your tie or your waistband, you unfold this first fold and then you would pin it right side to wrong side, like this. So this is how you would do it. I sometimes do it like this. <laughs> it's how you do the waistband anyway. And then you come over and flip this to the right side of the skirt here and then you end up top stitching right here. It's perfectly fine. It's just that I find this fabric really easy to work with and I think I can skip that first stitch and just take this and wrap it around like that, pin it, hand baste it and then sew it all in one go. I think that's really easy and that's what I'm gonna do. The skirt is wrong sides up. You can see the side seam here. When we go to this side, this is the right hand side, but this is the left side of the skirt. And this is where the longer tie is gonna be. It's gonna be on the left side when worn. And this is the side that's gonna be underneath the wrap. So when you put the skirt on, this goes first and then the other side goes second. This side over here is the left side, but the right side, and it's gonna have the shorter tie right there. It's gonna make sense when we wrap it around and put it on. I've got the ties hand basted on even until the end. And at the end, I folded that in, the raw area, and hand sewed that closed invisibly. So it's all done. It's all about one really, really long straight stitch that's gonna hold all of this in place. I'm gonna be using an adjustable blind hand presser foot. It helps me sew on the edge really neatly. And it's just one long, 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 long seam that's gonna fix this tie in place. This is my bohemian wrap skirt. I think my version has nothing bohemian about it. I think it would be if it had the ruffles on the flounce. <laughs> it just depends on the fabric choice as well. So I'll just take it off this hanger. I was fortunate enough to have fabric wide enough to not need a center back seam. So mine doesn't. I love that I, love that I didn't have to do that. And then you just have side seams over here. The front pattern pieces are exactly the same. The back piece was on the fold, super easy to do the general construction. You saw that I hand basted the curve over here for the hem. I think that's super important, at least for me, so it ends up really smooth and you don't end up with puckers. And so let's pretend this is a skirt. I'm gonna put it around, but you know, like a cape. So let's pretend my neck is my waist. <laughs> the left side, this is what comes in first. This has the long tie and that's gonna go around you like this, and the right side is gonna come over here and then you're just gonna tie it up right there. How about a cape, right? No. <laughs> this is just a demonstration of how to wear it, super easy. Because these ties are really, really thin, you don't need buttonholes or anything for them to go through. You know, it's not bulky to just have them crisscross behind you. If you are doing the wider waistband, then there is a buttonhole opening that you need to do to put the tie through. So that's something to consider. And it was such an easy sew. Once I got sorted about what side the ties were, what was the short side, what was the long side, then it became easy. See, there's one side that's shorter than the other right there. This side, the right side, comes over and wraps, so that means that that side is the shortest. In any case, if it ends up the wrong way, then you just wrap it the other way. Who's gonna care? <laughs> I was just trying to replicate what the pattern intends, which is for the tie to be on the left side right here. I didn't want to get that incorrect. So I hope my tutorial helped. This is super easy. Nothing more to share over here. 
it's just a matter of seeing it on and I've styled it a few ways for you to see. This is my version of the Bohemian wrap skirt from Pattern Emporium. I made a size 16 Australian. I used navy linen rayon blend. Got tucked in my sweet toka bubble sleeve top, which is super cute. I did the simple version. You can add raffles and a flounce along the curved edges of this front wrap skirt. I didn't do that, I just hemmed it. I did a narrow hem and I have the narrow tie option. I think for this skirt, the majority of times I will tuck in just to show off the wrap detail. And because the shape of the top here is more voluminous, you can see my ties are really narrow and they tie on the left side of the body. Super, super fun construction and I love this casual look, navy and white. One of my favorite color combinations. A little red there for a pop of color in the bag. I found this cami that's a little shorter, semi fitted I don't think it looks bad, not tucked in. I actually can't tuck it in. When I turn over, it has a wrap feature on the back, similar to what's happening with the skirt. That's why I thought pairing this up would be really cool and it would make sense to have that wrap feature in the top as well. So yeah, this is not a top to tuck in. I don't feel it looks boxy. You know, not everything has to be tucked in. And in this case, I think this looks super cute. And I love that I found this top, <laughs> made it so many years ago. This is a woven tank in a lovely print that has red and navy. Of course, it's gonna go perfect under my skirt. I pulled out some red shoes and a red bag and I'm set to go. These outfits are so easy to put together. I have so many more ways to style this skirt, but it's gonna be so amazing. And it's so classic, it's so simple, it's so clean looking on the front, love it. There are other options you can add if you want to, but in this case, I felt like keeping it like this. It's very simple and I'm very happy with my choice. Here I've got a white cami tucked into my skirt and one of my songbirds. Songbird is from Pattern Emporium as well. And this is a shorter version in a structured linen rayon blend. I think it looks really nice. And another option, songbird has navy and white. So I think these go together perfectly. Love the look here. And another way to wear a light layer on top. I've just literally finished sewing this. It was so relaxing, so fun. If you follow my channel, you know that I'm always sewing and sometimes I'm doing things that take me days and days and days to sew. And then there's others that just take me two or three hours to sew like this one. So that's really nice. <laughs> the reason it took me a little bit longer maybe is because I do a lot of hand basting, which I know a lot of people don't do, but I don't regret it. It's an investment on my time and I know I'm gonna be really happy with the result. So give it a go, this could be a real classic. You can keep it simple like this one. If you like extra details, go ahead and add the ruffles and the flounce. I think having a lot of options is great because you're always gonna have something that you like, that you prefer, so I really love that. In this case, I really wanted something classic, something super clean, something simple, and that's what I got, and I'm very happy. Navy, I mean, how many hundred ways can I wear this? I can even wear it in winter. Winter doesn't get too cold here. I can imagine me wearing the boots underneath and a nice jacket on top and really nice scarf and it would be amazing as well. Don't forget to check out the Bohemian Wrap Skirts, 50% off, it's an amazing deal. Ends Friday night around this area of the world. I hope you have an amazing weekend. I'm trying to lure a stray cat to come and live with me. That's what I'm up to. <laughs> I'm trying to just feed it every day, it comes to the balcony, it sleeps there, it's been hissing at me. I just really hope I can get it to stay because I really want a cat. Anyway, cat things, cat adventures, I hope it works. I'm just dying to have a cat and I think adopting an adult cat would be easier than having a kitten. This cat that just hangs around has just really robbed my heart. It's a black and white cat, it's beautiful. I think it's male. But it's a stray. I'm just trying to feed it and trying to help it stay. You know, it would be a good place for him to stay if he only knew. I'll see you again here very soon. Bye.